Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. <laughs> I don't know. It's so something along those lines. Uh, I, I, I contend that most libertarian authors have their stuff written at a grade level that's too high for the common man, quote unquote, whatever you want to say, to uh, decipher. I mean, I would probably put all of our IQs at well above 100. And I, I Speak for I yourself, he, young man. We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery, statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. And welcome to the 152nd episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. Even you, Belarus. You can learn more about this at BIPCOT.org. All right. Where is Belarus at? I have no idea. I need It's a on the border of Russia, and it's between Russia and Poland. Oh, yeah, Somebody yeah, it's get in me a the globe. Balkans. Hmm. <laughs> Anyway, I can of, get you a flatter. It's a bit, no, man. it's a little bit. It's a little bit north of the Balkans. It's it's on the northern side of Poland, over by Lithuania and Estonia. Okay, so so it's closer. It's closer to like uh, the Scandinavian right. countries than it for, is the Balkans. For next show, Dave, let's make sure that you actually know the uh, the country you're mentioning when we start, <laughs> before we start. All right. Hey, um, I just don't want to. You know, get a I don't bio. want some foreign government do declaring some, war on me for some, no reason and me not Wikipedia even know where they're stuff. at anyway anyway all right so yes hey everybody we're back this is jeremy and we actually have everybody here tonight you've, you've already heard from dave and andre and shane's here too so we actually have have all four hosts here on one ship. night tonight so uh what's going on fellas how uh how the heck you doing doing great man i'm doing fantastic how about you it's uh it's been a a, sh a little while since i've been on the show i've been busy studying so i'm fortunately haven't uh haven't quite had the, the same amount of time school well uh i've completed two out of the four finals uh that i have for the semester i have two more to go next week and then i am free and clear for three months which is probably how long it's going to take for me to figure out what my grades are and that's when you're going to be coming up here to sweat your nuts off right <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, that is absolutely 100% correct. Uh, for everybody That's listening, I I am going to go up to where Dave is and where Dave grows all his stuff, and I am going to help him work on the farm over the summer. The, True uh, fact. The, the lawman's wow. going to be a farm hand. Is that kind of what? Uh... Yep, that's correct. That's <laughs> correct. It's always been it's always been my belief that if I am going to be responsible or partially responsible for any enterprise, it behooves me to know how that enterprise actually functions before I take responsibility for something. Yeah, that's a uh, that's it's, the reason it's, why I didn't. Smart. That's the reason why I wasn't. Uh, I, I didn't opt for becoming an officer, despite the fact that I could have. Uh, or going into uh, army intelligence, and instead I decided to be, you know, a, basically a, a glorified grunt. Because the way I figured it, if I was going to be, you know, directing and offering advice and information as to how to coordinate troops, I'd actually should probably know what the hell they're doing, so I have some way to speak intelligently about how they should be organized. Hmm. No, that's not how the army works. <laughs> Maybe well, I know that's why I'm not in there anymore. That's why I'm not in there anymore. Coincidentally, 
Well, uh, so you have two more finals left, and then you, it's just after that you're clear for three months, and then you have to go back and start up fall classes, I'm guessing? Yep, that is correct. I'm also going to be taking this time off to uh, the time off from school to catch up on my fiction writing and on Steam It because I have not been doing those at all for well over 60 days. No, I feel no, really you, shitty no, about no that. I have not. Not saying yes, any. I'm sorry. We don't say. I, we don't I say. Yeah, I never, never, never say anything from Andre. We're also going to be writing that book. Remember, Andre? <laughs> oh yeah, of course we are. I'm waiting on you, boss. Waiting on you. <sighs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. That. So that. I, it's, that it's I don't mean be, to put you on blast on the air, but I'm putting you on blast on the air. <laughs> That'll never see the light it's, of day. It's going to be called "What Kind of Needs to Happen" by David Andre, and it's just going to be. What kind of needs to happen? <laughs> Does that sound like uh, is this the watered down version of what needs to what, be done what or what must be done? Be the, the, the yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Jeremy's what, tracking. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I figured. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's what must be done. Is that what is that the title? I don't, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, what must be done? Yeah, okay, that's what. Yeah, I thought that was what. What kind of would be a good thing if it happened? <laughs> let's, let's, let's let's make that. <laughs> this guy of might would be really nice be if a cool occurred, if, this occurred. Uh, you guys all agreed to this stuff, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's something along those lines. Uh, I, I contend that most libertarian authors have their stuff written at a grade level that's too high for the common man, quote unquote, whatever you want to say, to uh, decipher. I mean, I would probably put all of our IQs at well above 100. And I, I, Speak for I'm yourself, thinking, young man. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking, bottom line, for you to even be able to really grasp Rothbard you know, you're going to need somewhere in the 100s to 110s just to even bottom line grasp it. So, like, someone's got to be dumbing these messages down, you know, for a lack of better words. Uh, and what I want to do is rewrite some of this literature in a fourth grade reading level because that's what the national average is in America, Canada. You've, you've mentioned this Mexico before. Be a two and I, I did try to, the last time you tried to do it, I tried to point out that somebody already attempted to do this. And his initials might be AK. But, uh,. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he did it, but he, you know, he kind of. You you claimed even that was too high, right? That was too that much. Was, that was you, said, you claim at the time. I think you claimed that was eighth grade, and you you want to dumb it even further. It needs to be less. It needs to be less. It it does actually. It's a simple message, guys. Like, hey, my property, leave alone. Well. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you can make it even simpler than that. I mean, heck, Jim Jesus made made a flag for me, hippity hoppity, off my property. You know. <laughs> Yeah, hippity hoppity, no get comedy. off my property. I love that one. <laughs> off, off my property, no comedy. You know, <laughs> it's uh. Honestly, it, it, you can boil down libertarianism. You can, uh, but I don't very think simply, I, I, and I don't know why these guys want to. They want to go so thorough in their explanation well, on every not, one of their books to where. Well, it depends I mean, honestly, on who you're talking some of about. Pop stuff, you've got to have a damn tenth grade. Yeah, but you, are, you also have to crazy, look at like. You're, you guys are talking about like three or four percent of the population. I know this sounds crazy, but like, yeah, but you also have to really look at it, is. You have to, it depends on who I mean, at least from my perspective, it depends on who you're talking about and where they're coming from, because, you know, some of these people are coming from a, the academic field. So it's it only comes natural to them to write mm -hmm. in the in that in that type of language and that, you know, in, the, in that way that it may not be for everybody but that's not the point they're not going to change you know they're they're writing it to get it out there i mean i'm going to i'll i'll definitely agree with you these ideas are very simple and they c can be put in more simple ways but i don't I, I i don't know i i see a difference between doing that and essentially dumbing it down where i at least in the conversations i've had you, with you in the past with this the the way that you seem to want to go with this i understand i, I mean i understand it on on a, on a certain level but i just i don't think it's necessary because i've seen plenty of people well you know thomas Paine had his common sense pamphlet that kind of went viral back in the day and you know i think Hops, what's must what must be done could go viral if any you know if so ninety percent of the people that read it could understand it. Well, okay, so here's here's my two cents, and I want to point this out because on the one hand, yes, it does behoove us to condense it in such a way that it's easier to digest. The problem is when it comes to property theory, especially the property theory that Hoppe is talking about. Um, that's incredibly difficult to do, and I've become more and more cognizant of this the more I've had to study property law in school because there's an amazing amount of nuance there that you don't realize until you actually start getting into studying it, and it doesn't translate easily. Like, so, for example, no, when you say property isn't the thing, property is the interest in the thing, like, 
nine times out of ten, nobody's going to understand what the hell you're saying. But that's like that. that that's it's the, the basis legal for, title to the thing, essentially. Yes. Well, I, yeah, yes. You, exactly. You, that, that's the, that's the basis for you know understanding of property in its legal sense and what qual you know what the baseline is for you know libertarian system of social order that's uh, something like that even a concept of, uh, like that which took me a while to really kind of grasp and understand um and be able to articulate to people is not something that translates easily to you know a, no, a fifth hard. grade reading level well yeah. so on the one hand yes i do think that we should try to make some effort to go that direction uh but at the same time i think there's going to be some limitations here well that's kind of, yeah. I I, yeah. I think you put it you put it much better than I did I think but that's kind of what I was get as what I was trying to get at at least cuz I, I I think you can and uh, I, it may be necessary as I you're saying I'm Well no that, that you that, that I'll you, be happy to help don't get me wrong yeah. I just think it, we're going to run into a lot of roadblocks that well, may not actually have a solution That's what I'm saying it, it doesn't it, I I think dumbing it down is taking it too far I think there there are ways you might be able to simplify certain things but to your point absolutely there, there's a rephrase in, in order to be the better. In, in order to in order to describe to someone else your th this vision of what or this uh, this uh, this theory of what can be you know can be done in order to reach this end there's a lot of groundwork that has to be laid and that re like andre andre yeah. saying it's really some of that some some of it you can simplify other parts of it mm -hmm. not so much it's not as easy as you would think so you know like i said dumbing it down i don't think necessarily but yeah there's definitely ways you could i think you can make it more digestible w without taking it uh, down to a fourth or fifth or you know even you know well, okay, middle so school reading level there are ways I, you could what do I it i think is yeah what what i think is what i think would probably be the best course of action is instead of trying to take everything and drop it into like the most easily digestible form and try to make it you know uniform across the board um focus on what you can essentially dumb down and use those as building blocks or as stepping stones to get to yeah. like you know how you, you you do it with a socratic method right you start with a question you start with a question a very broad question mm -hmm. and you deductively work your way down until you reach you know the axiom or the principle. Well, I mean, that's what that's the basis of what must be done. You know, the whole question is how should an anarcho capitalist engage the modern state? And we've got to dumb the message down. Okay, again, you're <laughs> not dumb it down. Yeah, but I was going to say, maybe, maybe, a, maybe, maybe it's digestible. <laughs> yeah, um, right. maybe it's just manner, the language that you know, we're so using. So it can be right. received in a digestible manner. That's the issue right there. Is well, is well, like me, I was saying, there's an IQ boundary on most of this stuff and a reading level boundary. And these are real things. These aren't me, just figments. Let me let know? me let me let me throw it at, at, uh, for instance at you and see if maybe this is along the lines. Or are you talking about taking? I mean, are you? I guess maybe each of you, because you guys are both talking about working on this project together. Uh, something like uh, Mur Bob Murphy put his book out. What was it? Uh, Choice is that the one? The one where he took human action. And he basically yeah, he uh -huh. distilled it down as much as he possibly could and tried to you know and again he obviously <laughs> ran into certain issues because Mises is extremely hard to simplify because <laughs> he you know oh yes. yeah I mean he's hard to read <laughs> yeah well exactly period. exactly so, yeah and I mean I think I haven't read I haven't read the whole thing yet but I've read excerpts from it and uh, I think I mean I I love Murphy's writing style and I just I like Murphy in general so like I obviously was drawn to it so I do have a bias but I thought he did a pretty good job from what I read so I don't know if either of you guys have looked at that or read that book um, but are you are you thinking along lines the lines of that or you're talking about taking it even further because even we, Murphy can break it down certain ways but he's still an academic too okay. You know, he's a he's a, he's a, a a college a college professor. You know, he's an economist. You know, college guy. Uh, you know, that's all right. If you go read what must be done, it's kind of sectionated. You know, it's like uh, what's what's happening right now. What happened in the past? How we could get to a certain point, and then you know, it all sums it up on how to get there, basically. So what needs what what I want to do is break those down into two or three sentences. And and then put them in only within the bounds of fourth grade reading level and below, like all of the words that are from first to fourth right. grade. All right. Combine so you're, all you're of still... them and use that pool of words. That way, not one word is misunderstood by the large majority of America, well, or Canada, or Mexico. Like I was saying, you know, like the uh, Britain's, uh, I think a, a little bit higher on the on the the international reading scale. But it's not much. Like everyone's around fourth or fifth, really. 
Like Taiwan, I, China, some parts of Taiwan I and China and Japan. I don't are think crazy. we're going to be able to accomplish that goal, but get breaking it down to maybe a sixth rated breeding level would probably be realistic. Um, I don't think we can get it any simpler than that, only because at that level, there the words that you would need to use are so capable of equivocation that like the text would just lose meaning. That's that's what my biggest fear behind the whole thing is: well, is at what I, level can we go to without it? I being don't know if it's so wishy washy and equivocal is the, that it is, loses meaning. Is there really any level though? Because unfortunately, I, I mean, I, while I appreciate the you know as we're discussing this, the you know the the maybe, maybe even like I, I may even call it a need for this something like this to be done, <laughs> which is you know kind of uh, fun, are you saying this is what must be done? Yes, this is what must be <laughs> done in order to get what must be done out there. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think it's extremely uh, optimistic and uh, oh, oh would I I would almost dare go on the verge of utopia and only because you know at what level aren't words <laughs> uh, at what lo- well, level aren't words you're a damn utopia trying to boil hop down to a fourth grade reading equivocate level. yeah but like, at what level re- realistically I mean just look around you I mean look how much problem people have with language at any level I these mean, days because people I understand people, no the, no yeah hundred uh, percent different uh, so many words. It's so crazy. many words have different meaning, even without, you know, I'm not even talking about like if you even if you remove like the SJW and like all the other and like the language police and all that other if even if you remove all that just the la- just the English English language in general leaves itself. I mean, it it le- it leaves itself open to a lot of expansion, I guess, but also a whole bunch of bullshit because it's one of the most like so many like, so many words are just like be able to be used as like to mean almost contradictory things in certain ways. It's just, ins- and uh, j- like I said, that's without the extra addition of more people trying to change the language. Uh, just the way they I were set up originally. <laughs> literally every word. Well, we okay, so here's, so word. here's, here's the problem. Before so they've been repurposed. Here, here's the do. ultimate problem. Here's yeah. the ultimate problem. You have to define words using words. And what are words? They're defined by other words. So it, it just, it's kind yeah. of like a, a circular problem that's never actually going to be solved. Yeah. The only thing you can possibly do is get as precise as you can. I mean, hell, you know, what are considered bright line legal rules? They're only bright line insofar as, you know, you have to understand the context in which those particular words are being used. But then you have to get into, okay, well, this is the colloquial use of that word, and this is the technical use of that word, and which one predominates and what, you know, it's a, it, it's a cluster. It's always going to be a cluster. Anytime you deal with language, it's going to be a cluster. Uh, it's just... The name of the game. I, I just um, even if we if we started but, at um, a sixth grade level reading level, if we if we I mean because you're talking probably adding ten thousand different words there. Uh, who is making all that racket? Probably in the back. increase. Is that me or is that Shane? I don't know. Somebody's got racket going on in the background. Not me. That's no. that's me. I have my no. my daughter. With oh, okay. Shane, you're you're the only one who gets a pass. Possibly because <laughs> you got a, I mean, you got a little one. <laughs> I give you a pass for that. There's Andre. there's all these books out here that we've all read that we we can be realistic real quick. Most people wouldn't be able to understand them. Right. I don't even so, understand uh, all of them. I've had to read a couple of them multiple times. <laughs> yeah, and I consider I mean, myself. Happened, okay. happened I mean, when, me I, when I when I've had my time. when I I consider myself relatively intelligent, you know. So oh, yeah. what no, I, do. I mean, we're 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 all that way, and even even we have this issue where we have to like actually set forth and define the words we're using just to make sure that we're understood properly. Right, and uh, some of what I do has to do with uh, bringing these like obscure ideas that are not in the mainstream to people like my friends and family, and uh, I guess I kind of have converted a high percentage of my friends and family to you know libertarian or anarchist you know ways. But, you know, I think some of this, I wouldn't call it dumbing it down, but you kind of have to reframe a lot of this stuff to fit their perspective so they understand it better. And then uh, you kind of have to walk them through that baby step or Socratic method to where you're trying to get them to. But um, I think, you know, you can kind of distill a lot of this stuff to a fourth or sixth grade reading level and still make it somewhat digestible, but you will have to either avoid the more complex stuff <laughs> or dive in a little deeper and kind of, kind of overshoot your audience there as far as like they, but like you asked, like he was saying earlier, um, you can build those context clues with the easier to understand, you know, terms and stuff. But um, I mean, the, the can, one thing that kind of allude 
every oh, part of it say, hey, check it out this chapter in this book for more detail. You know, that's my thought. Yeah, you could do something well. like that. But um, the one thing that gets me is the prescriptive nature of the book that you're taking, that you're drawing from, right? This is, uh, what's it called? Well, what must be done? Well, it's yeah, just a, it's a, a part an article, of, I believe. Yeah, you wrote. It's, okay, yeah, it's, it's an, an article. article. All right. Well, it's I get hung up on the such must. A high, like, I mean, I would probably say. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> that's probably Triggered. 11th or 12th grade reading level stuff that that stuff. Yeah. So, so anyway, I guess must is kind of a trigger word for me. And it has the same kind of prescriptive nature as words like it. need or should <laughs> or ought. Yeah. It almost sounds like autism to me, you know, but as long as it's more Descriptive well, I, 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 think, I think it's even worse. It's it's worse than autism. It's absolutism, and that you know. But I but I but it's how, do that. Ch- how do we change it to descriptive? Then? Like, <laughs> no, I, I know I, I, I know what you're saying, but I don't I don't I don't think uh, you know I, I don't think even Hop himself was taking it that far when he wrote that. Right. Um, yeah. You know. But I, I get what you're saying, man. That's what that's one of those words. If I if I was going to get triggered by words, that's one of those ones that would start to set me off. Be like, or you know, because I am so against that whole absolutism thing. But that's so trigger. What you're talking about, Shane, is is I'm is absolutely. A, Against absolutism. What, what you what you were describing, Shane, is is kind of what I was talking about earlier. What I was trying to get at is that I don't think it's necessary. I mean, in some cases, yes, it may be necessary to, for lack of a better term here, dumb the language down. But on the whole, I think more people you can actually by you don't even necessarily have to simplify it. It's just putting like however you came to understand it. If you can put it in your terms to them mm-hmm. right away you're going to feel that you're chi- yeah but right away you're you're it's, you're giving them a diff- like they could read that article or, or any article or any book by any of the people we've talked about or anybody else and but if you give them uh, with that you give somebody your perspective what you got out of it you know how you how you see the what they wrote how you interpret it in your words right away you would bring it down a level to where more people will be able to understand so you don't even necessarily have to use you know don't, you know little kid words for you know you really don't you it, it's well, more about the like i said in some, i did i did preface this by saying in some cases yes but i think on the whole a lot more people it, i think a lot of it has and i've this is something i've realized and i think shane really hit on it is this is something, it's something i've realized especially over the past couple of years it, it really has a lot more to do with the delivery and how you go about doing this, not just the, the language itself, but also just the, you know, trying to relate to these people first and to any, you know, whoever you're trying to reach or talk to or, or get these ideas across to. And, you know, because obviously once you build any kind of rapport, people let their guards down and they're more open to accepting new ideas. And again, if you've taken it and then distilled it into your own words and you don't even necessarily, you know, just just having a conversation without even having to dumb it down too far. Just, oh, yeah, I saw, you know, this is what this is how I saw it. And this is this is what I got from it. And, you know, oh, OK. And then people make the connections from that. And then they go back and maybe they go back and read it a second time and they pick up on even more of it. Because while I while I definitely agree and I know the, the different averages and the and the the uh, what the studies Dave's talking about where there, you know, where it says people are on this this type of grade level and whatnot but i th- that also you know those surveys those polls uh i put as much stock in them as uh you know i do any well, politician says to- uh, well no i know I, I i understand what you're saying and i know to some extent it's true but on the whole i think more people you just it, it's more about communication and there's it's the fact that mm-hmm. so many people don't communicate effectively i i'm one of them i constantly have to work at my i've been trying to work at it really hard over the past couple of years especially you know you're you're it's the ability to communicate p- people too because people like us and you know we've all gone through we've talked about it extensively on this show the you know have going through that phase where like you figured it all out and you want to tell everybody else and well there you usually go or the wrong way about telling people and you end up alienating a lot more people because you just right. like you just sm- you smack your forehead a lot and go i don't get it well, why don't you get this you're you must be an idiot if you can't get this because it's it really is simple because the whole like the whole time you have this idea in your head that wow these ideas are really simple when you break them down but there's a whole lot of like i said 
framework that has to be laid for a lot of this stuff, especially when it comes to property. Like you have to be able to lay all this stuff. And that is not as simple. You know, the whole idea of voluntary interactions and like the basic idea of property. Hey, this is mine. This is yours. You don't touch mine unless I say it's okay. I don't touch yours unless you say it's okay. You know, simple stuff like that. Sure, you could do. But anything beyond that, you know, to get into these different prin- the, the principles and everything, as Andre mentioned earlier, it's not as easy to break that down to this simplified level of where at least you see, at least you seem to be coming from, Dave. That you want to bring it down, the, the language bring bring it down that far. I I think at least you I know, think you can use like you know it's it's going to be a combination of both four because- paragraphs to describe the same thing that you could do in one sentence. You know, like I mean, there's uh, so, sometimes yes, and to to an, to a large extent, I think Jer- Jeremy has an excellent point because it does matter how you relate well, I think Jeremy has people. a dead on point it's yeah, just it's going to be excellent hard. point um, yeah but w- but with that you do have to reduce the language to where it's it's more digestible and easily it's more easy to it's easier to pick it up for the average person than you know cuz most of us are at where we're at the because we because we we've sat through and we've you just know. you know digested and absorbed all of this stuff so like you know uh, things like you know future interests or possessory interests makes sense to us because we understand the context. Most people don't. So, uh, you know, it's like uh, I, I've, you know, gone through and I've tried to explain legal concepts to people that have no idea about the law, the actual law, right? And it require it does require a level of breaking it down, you know, Barney style, so to speak, <laughs> uh, that I, I don't think is, is really present in a lot of literature. So I think it, on the one hand, yes, it does matter how you present it. But on the other hand, you also do have to break it down that to that you know, basically legal ethics for dummies essentially is what it has to come yeah. down to. And it does help to know your target demographic and the kind of language that they use because then you're going to try to translate it into their language so that they can understand the terms better, even though you may not be using your own terms, but if you're using the terms they understand, then they, they tend to get it more often. It's well, almost like you're making the King Dave's version of the ANCAP Bible. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hang on a second there, Shane. Are you saying that people have Wait, different many, cultures like, and respond to ideas differently? Whatever, all together at once. Whoa, whoa. Uh, no, no. Hang on, hang on. I, I wanna, mean, I if, really if, wanna, if, no, no. <laughs> I want to drill on this point. Shane, are you saying that not every person is the same? <laughs> I'm saying that. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Every person is an individual, okay? Every Especially single person. Women and, men. and they respond all the same way okay everyone you can't you can't prejudge that you cannot prejudge that but it's so bigoted i'm so triggered right my, now i gotta find my uh, sisters they said you know right, well, three out of four three out of four hosts have been triggered already and we're only uh, <laughs> half an hour in excellent uh shane tolkien said the ints could uh say uh, could say one sentence for a, an entire year it would take them to say it uh, you know, I, we could we could take Hop's literature or any anybody's literature and, and do that like quadruple expound upon everything, in my opinion. But that's only going to reach a certain amount of people. I mean, I'm trying to widen the the just the band here of who can actually decipher and understand these these essential. Essentially, they're just memes. But I, that's my goal with this whole thing. So I, I just want to, you know, the four dummies series. Like kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And again, they've done, you know some of this stuff has been done, and I'm not you know I I like I said earlier I think there I I may even throw the word you know which is funny because we we're talking before I was talking about being against absolutism, but I was I was tempted to throw the word need out there earlier in regards to the fact that this you know stuff like this is needed because it would be highly. Are you trying uh, to make a prescriptive statement? I know. I'm try I'm trying hard that's, not to. How that's dare pres- you? <laughs> but I, but That's I prescriptive absolutist. I know, autism. right? Like I said, well, I said, I'm bordering on it. I haven't quite got there yet, but like you know, kind of like one of those Take things, like jump. You know, if kind of like a statement I used to make. If if I believed in a requ- required reading, this is what I would you know, this, such, such and such a book I would consider required re- reading. That kind of thing. Yeah, mandatory reading of <laughs> Four New Liberty for everyone. Exactly, like that type of stuff. Like I obviously don't believe that it, people should be forced I, to after do so. After I but, finished Four New Liberty, I said. This should be required reading in every school, like before it all, like before I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before, before you realize I the really digested the entire situation and him, the way he thoroughly explained it, I was like, this should be required reading in school. Like, no, school would end at that grade. Like, you'd read this, you'd be like, this is all horse shit. And you'd leave. Yeah, 
If only. I don't know. If only. And that's when the I don't know. It'd be like begin. this is a class all in itself. If you can't, if you're still in school after this book, you lose. <laughs> well. I mean, like I said, like I said before, I, I I think the people doing this type of stuff is is I'm all for it. You know, I I, I think I think Murphy did a pretty darn good job. Take it, trying to take human action, which is one of the one of the most difficult things. Like every time I've picked that, I still haven't gotten through that thing. Every time I try to pick, like I still like he's he's a he is a very difficult read. That that Mises. <laughs> you've got to you've got to. In my opinion, you've got to grab like a chapter, read it in digestible chunks. Then scan it again because he is his lexicon is impressive. Yes, uh, it, it, he has he he, it's awesome, he presents actually. a comprehensive erudition. <laughs> erudition, I love you, Andre. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. So. anyways, Kanye West. Oh, what yeah. in the hell? Oh, Kanye. Oh, oh Kanye. man. I was, I was, it was funny. I was about to yell at Dave for a ham fisted segue, and I was like, oh, actually, he's right on this one. This, that was our plan originally. We were actually going to, for once, we were going to get right. into uh, some type of current event type stuff, but then we got sidetracked by a, com- a great conversation we were having you before the show. The TMZ <laughs> stuff, like, I no, was, I, I really haven't. wasn't. All right, so yeah, before we bury the lead. I really wasn't hold, on the holy crap train yeah, hold, until that moment. Hold honestly. on. Be- before we bury the lead too much, can somebody who has, Dave, I'm sure, has seen more, read more of these things, can somebody please actually let, you know, what we're actually talking about here before we bury this? Kanye West has basically broken the programming. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, he what is happened? going off. He's quoting Soul. No, I know, but what's the, uh, the latest thing that he? I, I I haven't looked into it that far. I just I know the controversy that is strong. They asked him what he thought about something about slavery or something, and he said, "Well, I mean, if you're a slave for 400 years, that sounds like a choice to me." Um, and well, then uh, this, more more this, specifically, it was like uh, you know you were a, you know black people were slaves for. 400 years you know and then we, we you know we weren't we weren't slaves anymore we weren't enslaved and now it's all in your head so if you you know if you choose to be enslaved and your mind that's your choice that's that's i think what the what the actual gist of the the tweet was yeah which would be much different well no no he said this in real life it. like this was in like he just said it i did see the oh, TMZ okay. interview no tweet. yeah yeah he was just at tmz's headquarter talking they were i don't know why <laughs> and then this guy got mad at him and was like, "What y'all saying lately?" And he was just going like, pulling out complete like race card and everything against well, Kanye. And Kanye was like, "Why do you have to come at me with this hate? Why, like, come over here and ask me, like, ask me what like like can't we come from love? Like, I'm just trying." And then it's like, <laughs> like I know what you're doing, Kanye. I do the same thing. I troll the shit out of someone and then I try to calm them down. Because I understand what I've done. Like, he's moved the window. We're not even having a discussion anymore about what Kanye said. We're having a discussion about your reaction to what I said. And what that does is it doesn't ever let you argue against it to where your confirmation bias gets a shot at, at reconfirming it. So it's really it's a hypnosis technique. Anyway, Anyways, but the uh, it's wild, man. Kanye has kind of jumped off the rails, in my opinion. I don't know what's going to happen to him in the next couple of months or years or what he what's what I, I have no clue. I have no clue. It looks like he doesn't want anything to do with his life that he currently is having. Like everything that he was like his whole life that he was running uh, before whatever has happened to him. He I guess he just doesn't want anything to do with it. So something has happened to Kanye West. He's playing forty-eight dimension backgammon underwater. <laughs> well, maybe he's just having a Chappelle yeah. moment. Maybe he's Three just having a Chappelle Kanye. moment, man. I'm just gonna. Kanye has come a long way from the Jesus walks with me days. You know what I mean? And uh, maybe he's gone all the way to the dark side and tried that and realized that he liked it better when you know before all of that when it was simpler for him. I don't. I don't. Know. You I'm know, there's no telling there. there Maybe there, there is. There's no way to know if it's an act or not. There, there's yeah, no way to know if it's an act or not. It could just be something else. Maybe he's having I've a come to Jesus like, moment, you know, or maybe he's not. I've never felt like we've ever. I've all right, honestly, just personally, I've I've followed Kanye's career like as a fanboy or as intently or like know everything about him. But like, I'm fairly confident I could pass a few tests on Kanye West. He, I don't think he's a faker. Like, I just think he's Kanye West. 
but I think they had a version of Kanye West they liked, and they're about to start getting a version of Kanye West they don't like. And for me, I think he's going for that troll spot. And, you know, right now, Trump's got the crown, and I think he's trying to go for it. You know, before Trump, he kind of had the troll spotlight, and now it's like... I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think Kanye actually... I think Kanye actually believes the stuff he's saying. <laughs> what I, well, you the, have to be, I, I don't, to be I a don't successful doubt, troll. Well, yeah, I don't doubt that he, he <gasps> believes what he's saying, but I'm curious as to how permanent this is. You know what I mean? Because like, or how radical oh, yeah. it that the deep hole goes. Because right now we're just getting the, the, the either the 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 the, f- the fingers getting poked through the you know the veil or whatever of this new Kanye West, or yeah. or we're just getting this new package deal. You know, like either this train is just now cranking up and it's about to go to crazy town. I'm or, hoping he's about to go full Jim Carrey. <laughs> I I want to see complete like like just Dude. some part of me wants to see like full blown like I'm running for governor I'm fixing Chicago or I'm running for mayor I'm fixing Chicago and we see Mayor Kanye or something like that see. I I don't know I I don't know he's the second coming of Trump before Trump was over that's what it is <laughs> that's what it is great see Double I have dragon I haven't. <laughs> Dragon energy, bro. That, that, Dragon that energy. That meme is funny. I think I'm gonna have to use that for the show image. Uh, <laughs> I know that Chicago is pure misery. Right I now. see. I I haven't paid attention like, and even then I wasn't really paying attention. I've barely paid attention to, to Kanye since like Gold Digger, and like I don't <laughs> like I don't really know you like, Luddite much much about the guy. I don't really I don't really care much about the guy. But it's funny because based on everything I everything else I have read and seen since. This all happened in the past couple of days, I guess. And what Andre explained, what he, how he interpreted the what 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 Kanye was saying, are two completely different things. Because the whole reason I said we could, you know, that maybe maybe you know when we said we oh maybe we'll talk about this, and I was like, oh, all right, you know, we don't do that many current events, but it was it was the whole idea of it, you know, because everybody's running around going, oh my God, Kanye said that slavery is a choice. <laughs> because you know, as as with everything in the media, it's the world's worst game of telephone. And it gets distilled down to this bullshit, but right. you know the way yeah. you. I mean, I, I don't know. Was that was that your the, the, both of your interpretations, Dave and Shane? Uh, you know how Andre well, described it, or was it more because everybody else is all in this yeah, uproar okay. about? So I saw the actual video interview with TMZ, and he was trying to get at the whole uh, mental prison idea, but um, mm-hmm. I think he dropped a couple of trigger words early on, and they misinterpreted him, and. Uh, the guy at the end, he kind of did make some good points. Yeah, he pulled the race card, but that wasn't like his entire argument, um, you know. But uh, Kanye, well, if, if he just started reading Soul, I mean, come on, Shane, <laughs> it's, he's his views are going to radically. He's just now stepping into the pool. I mean, Soul, look what it did to Eric July. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is well, this is true. Uh, Eric July definitely. Well, does if it happened to Thomas Eric July, with, why can't it happen to Kanye West? With uh, with a lot of his uh, transformation from uh, you know, he was he was a hardcore Democrat and then jumped to being an ANCAP after <laughs> after reading Thomas Sowell and then a bunch of other stuff. Exactly. So, no, you're like, right. No, you're overnight. right. So I didn't realize Kanye's reading Sowell. Well, that yeah, I had He's heard about, tweeting about him. He, yeah, he He's definitely tweeting oh. about him. You're reading about him. I saw. Yeah. Well, I mean. Maybe he's just reading quotes, but we'll see. You know, maybe he actually is reading books. You know, that'd be good. Uh, you know, Soul definitely has Thomas a Soul, lot of great if, stuff if out mo- there. <laughs> nobody's ever read any Soul. They they really should go read Thomas Soul. I, I I'm having a hard time remembering the three books I've read from him because it I, it came through a Tom Woods spree too. Like I I read a bunch of Tom Woods, then I read a bunch of Thomas Soul, and then I read a bunch of Mises. Um, and all of it was a blur. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the problem with the, that's the problem with information cramming like that. Is it, it always ends up backfiring? Like unless you unless you need to take it, it can come out if somebody started talking about it. It'll all just yeah, well, out of my head. But some like, of I, it, I, but yeah, it's but in there. I, I well, at least I, I had that. I had a similar problem. Although I tried, you know, especially when I first got involved in the whole liberty thing and trying to read and gain a lot more information and uh, try to find more resources. I tried to limit myself like as far as book, like I read a bunch of articles and stuff, but as far as books went, I tried to like largely stick to it. Just one for 
uh, from everybody because I was like, oh, there's just so much. <laughs> and like, I'm never, gonna, if I tried to get through like a- Find their bestseller yeah, and roll Well, yeah, it. yeah. And then like, I mean, although I did go through a Tom Woods phase where I read a lot of his stuff, although that actually coincided with one of uh, one of my extended vacations where a lot of reading ended He's up actually- He's very thorough. That's happened. why I like Tom. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think- uh, I, I I think I re- I can't remember the one. Yeah, I'm I'm having a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I I don't know if this is now like my the karma of me now the early onset on, on Alzheimer's or dementia kicking in for me like it did for my mom after I made fun of her and then she got hit with it. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been oh, losing wow. words lately. I, ha- I had that problem the the other day. Well, sh- all of I that recorded. is we can we can cure all that up with turpentine. <laughs> you and your turpentine, man. That just sounds actually. I think it could you be really late can. onset. Late onset um, memory loss from uh, cannabis use, perhaps. Oh. Uh, which. <laughs> no, if but, your mom is having dementia results, you can tell her that um, she can fix all that. I'm not up telling. I'm not telling her anything. All the sugar out of her diet. I'm not. Uh, anyway, well, my, my my you know as well as this being the uh, the week of the anniversary of my arrest, and uh, you know last the tail end of last week being the the anniversary of this whole you know things starting uh i'm actually now coming close on the anniversary of like i think the last time my mom and i spoke um or I, actually uh-huh. it may have been even longer than that because yeah we may have not spoken since about now because i don't think we spoke too much after i got uh, after i got out of my cage for the night and uh you know maybe once and then there was a couple of text messages but yeah i was trying to think because the last th- the last time we saw each other was back in june of last year and wow, we didn't we didn't speak we didn't speak a, we didn't speak a, we didn't speak a word to each other. So yeah, it's been almost a year. Uh, a year. Anyway, um, yeah. So anyway. I'm not I'm, I'm not going to give her any information. I just you know I I think I've talked about that before. And then I got and then I got then I got well I didn't get yelled at. Poor Jen got yelled at um, because she gave me information <laughs> about my mother. <laughs> That had been given to her by my sister, and you know she didn't think there was anything wrong with telling you know the son what was going on because there wasn't anything. Oh, don't tell Jeremy this. And then when I went ahead and talked about it on the Freedom Fiends, apparently somebody was listening, which I think is funny because that was one of my problems with my family for the longest time is that uh, you know they were you know none of them were paying attention to like you know it's one thing to like say they don't agree or whatever but like i had a big issue with my family because they they load all this uh shit on my sister um when whenever she's in any crappy tv show or movie or even commercial um and i like when i asked if any you know if, if anybody was gonna bother to you know listen on the radio <laughs> i was like listen my sister may have done movies and stuff I'm like you know but she hasn't done radio i'm like no nah, you know that's all right not our thing i'm like but her crappy TV shows were your thing. I'm like she's been, she's been some of the <laughs> it's been some of the most god awful shit, <laughs> like Days of Our Lives or As the World Turns. Bang, no hospital. What well, no, 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 no. I was talking no like the sh- like the the shows she's actually had recurring roles in, um, like uh, the shows that weren't even on like the main um, channels. It's been so long since I watched like TV. Hallmark um, channel or yeah, even 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 lower than that. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, like crappy crappy show. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Um, I don't, I, but yeah, I haven't. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, something about your sister in radio. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, my fa- I, don't, I don't talk to my. I, I oh yeah, no, that's what it was. Yeah, so but apparently somebody's been listening because they they she got all, they got all mad when I talked about it on air that I found this information out. And <laughs> And now everybody's claiming, like anytime I talk to anybody else in the family, everybody's claiming that there's uh, nothing wrong with her and that I was given bad information. And I was like, well, that's interesting because the information came from my sister. And then my sister went ahead and yelled at Jen for me talking about it openly. But she didn't say that I was talking about something wrong openly <laughs> she just said i was talking about it openly which kind of contradicts the fact that you're telling me there's nothing wrong and that i got bad information <laughs> it leads me <laughs> to believe that you folks are covering something uh which would just look jeremy it's not that you're talking about it that you're talking about it out in the open okay okay if you talk about it privately everything you you heard was true if you talk about it openly you're a liar and it's slander <laughs> yes how yes. dare you? Yes, apparently that's that's the case. But. but yeah, I either way, I think Kanye is on the precipice of craziness. So I is he know. about to ingest like a whole a whole bottle of red pills? Is he like at the on the verge? He, I, I, 
he's he can only say or go so far before basically he gets told shut up. Because I mean, he you don't get the money he's got, you don't get the stuff you've got without making certain sacrifices and putting black human on sacrifices. You. Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> he's knows? not Hillary Clinton. I don't think. Oh he's, man, know, I don't know. I'm not. Infants I don't want to. Well, lie. that escalated I, quickly. I just, I just know you can't be a number one big big star like Kanye West without making certain moral sacrifices to get there. Well, and, uh, I, I, well, yes, this is true. However, however, and this works in Kanye's favor. He is a popular black man who was outspoken and independent. And given the way that the victim, the victimhood Olympics work nowadays in social media, that is going to go a long way to allowing him to <laughs> reach a lot farther than Dude, any they sh- of us. They yeah. shot Tupac and Biggie. Uh, yeah, any of you us think they won't do it again? At what point are you going to be like, holy crap, I'm agreeing with Kanye West too much. And, and then and then you're going to realize, well, there, something bad's about to happen. So, so Dave, we'll, you, we'll get there. So then, then saying, it'll be the same thing like, you know, Tupac Shakur, you know, whatever, it happens. But what was that, Shane? His legend okay. will live on. I'm sorry. Go on, Shane. So what Dave is basically saying is that he's Illuminati confirmed. Yeah, that's... I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> Kanye pyramids is. everywhere. It's like this, man. Kanye is his career as far as music. He hasn't put out anything in a while, so his new album's coming out. So if you were a troll, if you were whatever, wouldn't you try to get a bunch of attention for your album? I mean, if we were playing Occam's Razor here, uh, his job is to make money for the record company, and they're going to say, hey, go put this hat on and say this and tweet these things, and he's going to say, I right, whatever, for this money. <laughs> like, that's all he cares about. So Yeah, that's... I, can I don't want to say it's that either, possible. but like, I mean, that's certainly possible. I don't, I don't deny that that could have, that could be what's happening. I just, I know, you know, last time we heard about Kanye West, it was what he's nine million or uh, ten million in debt and all this other stuff, and you know, well, yeah, but they're all in debt. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. Well, e- either way, like, I think uh, a lot more people are going to start pulling Kanye's too after they see this if he keeps going further. Yeah. They're going to say, oh, well, the water's fine. Nothing bad is happening to Kanye. And uh, this is going to... Until something bad happens to Kanye. You're going to see some crazy <laughs> then stuff then one day he's going to end up uh, having committed suicide with two, two, uh, two rounds to the back of the head. Or uh, get elected president and idiocracy is, will play out. <laughs> you, wait a minute. Yeah. You don't think idiocracy is already playing out with Trump in Jesus there? Camacho, <laughs> Herbert Mount- Jesus Herbert Mountain Dew Camacho. Yes, he's gonna he's gonna take that as his name. That's gonna be his presidential name. Something like that. No, yeah. see that you know actually that'd be know. funny. You know if if uh, see I I may actually vote for that if Chad what's his name the guy who used to go by Chad on Ocho Cinco, um, Chad uh, Chad, <laughs> jo- Chad Johnson right that was his original Brandon name or J- Chad Johnson yeah yeah well, that was his original that was that was his given name right if he could go that would be great if he ran with that name and if he he had his name changed to that I would I might actually vote oh. for him. <laughs> Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson. For president, <laughs> no, he no, he could change oh, it. To, he could change real, it. No, he could change it to Hector. Come on, we would be in total clown world if Kanye West became president. Again, you're you're uh, you're insane. insinuating that we're not we're almost there right with Trumpikins right. right now. We are all, yeah. we are almost there. We are. I mean, this timeline is getting progressively more and more crazy as, like, as yeah, time it, goes on. Like I, things you are know, getting bizarre. Have we played out the theory that Trump may be like I don't know the He's Antichrist? The <laughs> I don't no, know. okay, I don't buy that for a minute. However, I firmly Sheesh. believe that he came from the future. <laughs> I don't yep. even think that he came from the future for any particular purpose <laughs> but Biff to ta- troll. How do you Biff win, win a tri- rigged time traveling election? Trump. <laughs> well, you win you, the rigged election if you're the one doing the rigging. That's a callback which for, is our, possible for any of our a long-time time listeners. That's a re- <laughs> reference <laughs> from uh, multiple shows ago. <laughs> Yeah. Biff Tannen by a time traveling Trump. Yeah. We, have, yeah. we have two episodes. Yeah. Best Maybe. best episode title ever. I think we have two opinion. of those actually. Because <laughs> I think it returned. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, man. Guys, th- the, the timeline you're at, Andre, it's getting wacky. 
see this is this is a, this is the direct this is a direction I so did not see this conversation going because again I didn't do that much research into it I just caught wind of all the controversy and I thought I thought we were going to be talking more about the ideas of <laughs> slavery whether they're whether changed. they're actually Go is voluntary or not Kanye tweets and um, start reading them just some fresh now, ones come on let's see now, what he's saying and now oh, it's like well. we're talking about all those entertainment Hold stuff hey, whatever I just I'm so not versed in this i have no idea i mean we're gonna, if, we're gonna end the show with a couple of fresh kanye tweets what i think if he uh one thing i would like to see is him to keep tweeting about soul you know and it would be really cool to see him start taking like a jim carrey kind of direction where he's like waking up to a lot of things so maybe that's what's going on all right here let me look up some who tweets. knows We'll I've barely paid attention to him. Uh, I know I see some I, the last things one coming I read out of Jim Carrey every once in um, a while, and I see some people say that he's completely crazy, and then other people. He was like, love "Emma him. Gonzalez is my hero," and I was like, "What is this dude doing?" Who Jim Carrey said that? What is this? No. Oh, Kanye. Oh, Kanye. Oh, Jesus. Like two weeks ago, a week ago. Now, if he had said he's Emma old. Goldman, then I'd be with yeah. him. <laughs> Ugh. No way. Even even my even my even <laughs> even my daughter, you know. But no. In the golden that, that needs defenstrated. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, okay. geez. How, how much Emma Goldman <laughs> have you read, Dave? Uh, let's see here. When I, I was heavy on Soviet literature for a while, was so she Soviet? It was probably sometime. She, she, was a, <laughs> she was one of the bigger communist um, writers. She got really big in Russia. She's a communist Goldman writer. <laughs> Oh, Dude, okay. she was an anarchist. Uh, labor unions and stuff. Am I thinking of the right Emma Goldman? Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong Goldman. As far as I know, communism was a Marx thing, and Marx was against most of the anarchists at the time. Yes, well, that's why. Yes, that's despite why. Uh, their claims to the contrary, this is this is in fact correct. Yes. Yep. Wonder well, but Marx wasn't real communism, though. Marx just adopted communism. Communism was anarchism. Okay, guys. I don't know if you know this, but if you share anything, you're basically a communist. Okay, guys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you. I didn't know if you know this. Communism. Didn't didn't know if you knew this or not. But uh, if you share, you're engaging in communism. Okay, guys. I just think they're all, all communism just tests to see what will win or fail. What win, will win or fail? Like communism didn't work. Next thing, <laughs> it's like all of it's just failure after failure after failure like either it's I, humans uh, trying to figure it out or some the puppet master behind the string or whatever you who knows but it, it to me it looks like it's like we 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 try we go hmm this all this in the past didn't work let's try this and then it's like well this was horrible let's do this and it's always just bloody to the top so it's like well yeah that's just the, that's the the path of human progress it's always making mistakes that's uh, uh, the funny thing is that you can draw parallels with you know individual people and then human you know human society as a whole. It's all a matter of making mistakes and learning from your mistakes, but only your own mistakes, not mistakes that other people have made or other times or you know eras or groups have made. You always have from your own. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of that. I'm not gonna lie. I I could have done the smart thing like my dad taught it me to do. It just sucks to be caught from in other people's a, um, mistakes. I it just sucks to be same. caught in a, a certain cycle part of the cycle you know no oh, of course yeah but but especially since i guess we're either at the point where we're all realizing we're at that there are cycles because there has to be a certain level of intelligence or history understanding to understand you know you, you get what i'm saying oh yeah yeah, yeah i do well, so like humans are the, hitting a the, level the, of understanding they, that they're finding out what works and fails so fast that it's we're almost to a point now where like we all know that the state doesn't work either we there's people that believe about believe in it but we all know mathematically because we could run it through computers right now that the state can't pay for any of its stuff well that, yeah and it's like I've, I've said before with the increase in technology uh and the increase in our ability you know in our productive ability we've seen and watched social changes happen much much faster i mean you know it used to be you know, a thousand years ago that, you know, uh, kingdoms would last for like, a, you know, 100, 200 years, no big deal. But that's only because the rate of change was so slow and everything took so long to for things to happen that you, I mean, it, it should come as no surprise that things lasted a lot longer and things changed a lot slower back then. 
Yeah. And now we're we're entering an age where information is like freely, instantly available to anyone who wants it. So I mean, we're a couple. Of we steps shouldn't be surprised by this. The Matrix, right? Like just having, hey, tell me how to fly this helicopter, and then just boom, be in your head. Uh, well, yeah, I, I would say in a, in the simplest sense, yes, we are. Uh, that's not to say that any of those steps are going to be easy to accomplish, but yes, <laughs> it, essentially, we're not that far off. We're we're actually nearing the point where we can actually download information into our brains. Yeah, we're about to download some Kanye tweets and end the show. Though, what do we got, Shane? <laughs> Anything crazy? Well, he's got a lot of like random business stuff on here, but then he's also got uh, here from May first. Uh, he says the universe has a plan. I knew that TMZ would be awesome. Uh, doesn't really explain, give a lot of context there. Uh, he says we are programmed to always talk and fight race issues. We need to update our conversation. Wow. Uh, let's see here. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so if the, if he can break or even put a crack in the black mindset, if you guys will allow that phraseology uh, of, of victimhood and move it into and, and move it to more of a self empowerment and, and individual stance, that could do a lot of good, in my opinion, because there is this super crab mentality within certain sects of the black community that that keep them so pulled down that they can't get out. And I'm not saying getting out would be anything, something to achieve, but building up should be something that you are looking to achieve with always, always with everything is, is to make it better. And that has to be fixed, man. That, that mindset that it can't be fixed has to go away, you know? And that's, right. that's kind of what and, I uh, feel is there. He did explain in that TMZ interview that uh, he kind of meant the whole mental individual aspect of, you know, slavery. And uh, it's not like he also backtracked and explained how, you know, that was kind of a bad example, how he didn't mean like, you know, slavery was like a black thing. It's like a, it's an individual thing. It's a mental thing. And I think that was the whole point that was missed when everybody just kind of latched onto the whole race card, you know, went with that. But uh, I think he yeah. was coming from a Tubman position. <laughs> Believe it or not. Well, I saw, some, I saw something. I, I thought I saw something about that too. That he made mention of that and the her being on the dollar bill or something, or somebody else. Maybe somebody. The, 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 the twenty was it, right? I thought I saw some mention of that. But, something like that. That the Tubman might be on twenty. I don't know. Well, I don't know because we, well, I mean, we talked. I think we talked about that when it happened. I, I, I definitely think we used the either. A, title or a meme for a show or something like that about the you know the of course the horrible irony of that putting her on the <laughs> same bell with somebody like jackson um yeah. <laughs> yeah, how dare you was. speak ill of jackson that man was a patriot and a hero yeah how dare you that guy had he fought the banking system in yeah he did a lot of the horrible shit I man i mean i have history to prove me that guy had just pure like nastiness, not like, hey, this has to be done kind of stuff, you know, like oh, no, you, you know, they had about, all these you know evil <laughs> people. No, it was just evil, so pure go, evil. Bring, bring us back full circle, Dave. Yeah, he definitely was. It was absolutism and <laughs> authoritarianism. So it was like borderline. It wasn't, no, it, it wasn't must in like a, in, a, in a you know, it wasn't must in like a figurative sense. It was mu you must fucking do this. Yeah, that was Jackson's type ass. Yeah. I don't know how Bad that man dude. became president. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he learned to play politics. Yeah. That's, he's he's he lost not the, the only one because he couldn't play politics. There's... And then once he learned how to play politics, he got there. And then once he was in there, he was like, "Yeah, I'm just going to do what I want." There was plenty. I of heard things. he was a Rothschild agent. There's plenty of nasty he pieces of work. Confirmed before. Illuminati. Yeah. All right, we're not we're not going down. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Get your fluoride water filters here. I let the I let the Illuminati. He had a Nephilim in him. I let the first <laughs> Illuminati reference fly. I'm not gonna. All right, all right, all right. Take all right. it there. So yeah. So on that note, then the we should. Pro- were- yeah. Okay. They, they, Dave's starting to lose it. We should. Uh, we should probably get wrapping up then. So. Uh, <laughs> 
Like I said, uh, this, <laughs> this definitely took a couple. Of, this this conversation definitely took a, a couple of different turns. I did not see it coming. Uh, but uh, thanks, guys. You never know when you have all four of us here. <laughs> well, this this is the. I mean, other than having Shane on as a guest, this is this is the first time we've had all four of us together, right? Since we invited Shane to join us right. on a permanent basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Or I did a four man crew coming. since since Andre and Danilo and myself and you were on. So I don't even think. We had we never even had that. that would be Daniela just disappeared on us. <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah. all right. So as before, we get uh, closing out. Uh, anybody have anything they want to say? I'll start with Shane, since of course he was the one who got the least amount of time to speak tonight, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> Shane, you have hmm. anything you want to say before we go? Not really. All right, then. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, Dave, anything before we get going? No, no, just uh, that Belarus is in fact in northern Europe, not in not necessarily in the Balkans. It's it's more in northern Europe. Thank you for the geography lesson. Okay. Once again, Andre. You're welcome. Appreciate <laughs> You're it. You're welcome. Don't know what I do without you. Uh, um, Dave, I don't even know why I asked. All I have to say <laughs> is that I mean, if you really 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 think about it, we've got to knock this out, guys. We've got to free this country up for our children. So stop being pussies and let's start doing it. We. What do you mean we, white man? We must. We must. <laughs> you got a frog must. in your pocket or something? <laughs> you, got a, you got a squirrel <laughs> in your trousers? All right. So We absolutely must. All right. <laughs> Before before Dave goes full out uh, dictator on us, we're gonna we're gonna end the show. So once again, thanks guys. This has been fun. Thank you everybody for listening. This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. The Patreon is still up and running. Patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty. Uh, I do apologize. We I fell behind again. I missed last week, but I will be putting out two episodes shortly to catch up on that. And by the time you guys hear this, hopefully we'll be back on track. So once again, thank you, everybody. And we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace, Peace in the Middle East. This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit, and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.